I've got a story that'll make you think twice about late night pizza deliveries, especially if you are a girl. This happened to me just a few years ago. It was a regular night, or at least I thought it was, filled with the usual mix of mundane deliveries and occasional tips. The order that changed everything came in around just before midnight, a large pepperoni with extra cheese, the classic comfort food combo. I grabbed the pizza, hopped in my car, and punched in the address. It led me to one of those quiet suburban neighborhoods, the kind where the houses all look the same, and the only thing breaking the silence was the sound of my crappy car. I pull up to the address and something feels off. The house is at the end of a dimly lit street, surrounded by a thick wall of trees. I march up to the door, pizza box in hand, and ring the bell. The seconds drag on, and just when I'm about to bail, the door creaks open. There he stands, a tall, lanky guy, disheveled hair, with this weird grin that sends shivers down my spine. I do the whole routine. That'll be fifteen fifty, please. He hands me a wad of crumpled bills, way more than the pizza costs, and tells me to keep the change. Now I'm no Sherlock Holmes, but something about this whole situation feels off kilter. As I turn to leave, he mumbles something about needing help with something inside, like he's misplaced his wallet or some nonsense. Now, alarm bells are going off in my head. My gut screams, get out of there, but I don't want to be rude, you know? I cautiously follow him into the dimly lit house, pizza still in hand. I know. That should have been the last thing I did. When we entered the living room, I saw that the room was filled with boxes, piled high like a hoarder's paradise. The guy starts getting all fidgety, muttering about needing to grab something from the back. My internal alarm is blaring now. I'm standing there, pizza in hand, realizing I'm in a stranger's house with no clue what's going on. As he disappears into the shadows, I decide it's time to make a run for it. I turn on my heels, pizza box clutched like a shield, and head for the door. But just as I reach for the handle, I hear a noise, a faint shuffling sound, like someone trying to be sneaky. I glance over my shoulder, and there he is, emerging from the darkness, holding a cloth in his hand. My instincts kick into overdrive. This is bad, really bad. Without thinking, I bolt out the door, throwing the pizza like a frisbee and sprint back to my car. I lock the doors, heart pounding, and peel out of there like my life depends on it. My mind is racing, and it hits me. That guy was definitely up to something, something sinister. I look at the stack of bills in my hand, and it dawns on me. It was a distraction, a ploy to get me inside. I make it back to the pizza joint, tell my manager the whole story, and we decide to call the cops. They investigate the address, but by the time they get there, the guy in the hoarder's den has vanished into thin air. From that night on, I hung up my pizza delivery hat. No more late night runs to creepy houses. It's a wild world out there, and you never know what's waiting behind that door when you're armed with nothing but a pizza box. So here's a tip for all you late night delivery drivers. Trust your gut. If something feels off, it probably is. Because in the pizza delivery game, the only thing you should be delivering is hot, cheesy goodness, not becoming the star of your very own horror story. All right, let me lay out a story that happened to me during one of my pizza delivery gigs. It was just another Friday night, pizzas stacked, GPS set, and my car smelling like a pizzeria on wheels. I got an order for a small house on the outskirts of town. The address looked kind of fishy, nestled between the woods and miles away from any streetlights. But hey, tips are tips, right? So, off I went, navigating the winding roads as my GPS guided me into the heart of nowhere. As I approached the destination, things got weirder. The road turned from paved to gravel, and the only lights around were the ones on my car. I remember thinking, who orders pizza in the middle of nowhere? But hey, a delivery's a delivery. I finally pulled up to the address, a small rundown house that looked like it had seen better days. No porch light, no sign of life. I checked the order again to make sure I got the right place, and yep, this was it. I grabbed the pizza bags and headed to the door. The air was thick with an eerie stillness, like even the crickets decided to take the night off. I knocked, 
and the sound echoed through the silence. No answer. I knocked again, a bit louder this time. That's when the door creaked open on its own. I hesitated, thinking maybe it was just a draft, but there wasn't a breeze in sight. Now, I'm not one to get spooked easily, but this was starting to feel like a scene from a horror movie. I called out, pizza delivery, no response. The darkness inside the house seemed to swallow my words. Against my better judgment, I took a step inside, the door creaking shut behind me. The air inside was heavy, like there was a weight on my chest. The only light came from the glow of the TV in the corner. I called out again, this time louder, but the silence was deafening. That's when I noticed the faint sound of a music box somewhere in the house, a creepy melody that sent shivers down my spine. I made my way through the dimly lit living room, the floor creaking under my steps. The place was a mess, furniture covered in sheets, dust hanging in the air. It felt like stepping into a time capsule left to rot. As I moved toward the kitchen, the music box sound grew louder. I turned the corner, and there it was. An old music box sitting on the counter, its ballerina twirling in slow, haunting circles. I couldn't shake the feeling that someone had set the stage for a bizarre show, and I was the unwitting audience. Just when I thought things couldn't get any weirder, I heard a soft voice, a child's voice, coming from the hallway. Hello? I called out, my voice trembling. The voice didn't respond, but the music box kept playing its eerie tune. I cautiously approached the hallway, each step echoing through the silence. The voice led me to a closed door at the end. I swallowed hard my hand trembling as I reached for the doorknob. The door squeaked open, revealing a pitch black room. I fumbled for my phone, using its flashlight to pierce the darkness. The room was empty, except for an old crib in the corner. The child's voice had stopped, but the air felt charged with an unsettling energy. Then, I heard another voice, a faint whisper, like a hushed conversation just out of reach. I strained to listen, and the words became clearer. After that, I heard a child's laughter, mixed with the soft voice of a woman, as if they were sharing secrets in the shadows. My instinct screamed at me to get out, but my legs felt like they were glued to the floor. The laughter swirled around me and the air grew colder. I felt a presence, unseen eyes watching my every move. I stumbled backward, the door slamming shut behind me. The laughter faded, replaced by an oppressive silence. I didn't waste a second. I sprinted out of that house, not looking back until I was safely in my car, engine roaring to life. I sped out of there, the headlights cutting through the darkness. As I drove away, I couldn't shake the feeling that I had stumbled into something otherworldly, a place where the lines between reality and the unknown blurred. I delivered pizzas for a while after that, but that night haunted me. The strange house, the music box, the whispers, it felt like a nightmare I couldn't escape. Some places carry a darkness that sticks with you, and that delivery took me to the edge of it. So, the next time you order a pizza, spare a thought for the folks delivering it. You never know what kind of strangeness they might encounter in the dead of night, far from the safety of streetlights and familiar faces. I've got a story from my teenage years that still gives me the chills. Back in the 90s, I was slinging pizzas as a delivery driver, making a few extra bucks for gas and whatnot. Now, this one night, it all took a turn for the creepy. It was your typical Friday evening. The pizzeria was buzzing, and I was in the groove, loading up my old beater with piping hot pizzas. The delivery slip came through, and I scanned the address. The moment my eyes landed on it, a shiver ran down my spine. 13 a 13 Shadow Lane. Yeah, you heard that right, Shadow Lane, and trust me, it lived up to its name. The place was notorious in our little town for being the local spook central. Rumors of strange happenings, weird lights, you name it, Shadow Lane had it all. Now, being a teenager, I was all about proving I wasn't scared of anything, so I snatched up that delivery like it was just another pie. As I navigated the familiar streets, the atmosphere changed when I hit Shadow Lane. The street lights flickered, and the air felt heavy. My car crawled down the narrow road, flanked by towering trees casting eerie shadows. The house numbers led me to the infamous 1313, 
a decaying Victorian mansion that loomed in the darkness. I parked in front of the creaky gate, and the moment I stepped out of my car, a gust of wind slammed the gate shut. My breath caught, and I shook it off as just an old gate being well old. Pizza in hand, I approached the front door, half expecting it to creak open like in those horror movies. To my surprise, the door swung open with ease, revealing a dimly lit porch. The air inside was stale, and the silence was deafening. I took a cautious step inside, calling out the standard pizza delivery. No response. As I navigated through the dusty hallway, the creaking floorboards echoed like whispers in the shadows. I reached the end of the hall and found myself in a room that looked straight out of a horror flick. Tattered curtains, antique furniture draped in dusty sheets, and a faint scent of mildew. In the dim light, I spotted a figure in the corner. My heart skipped a beat until I realized it was just an old grandfather clock covered in a white sheet. I chuckled nervously, attributing my unease to the creepy setting. I called out again and heard a soft, echoing giggle, like a child playing in the distance. My spine tingled and I could feel the hairs on the back of my neck stand on end. Something was off, and I couldn't shake the feeling that I wasn't alone. I made my way to the back of the house, following the sound of that creepy giggle. The hallway seemed to stretch on forever, and the air grew colder with every step. I rounded a corner and found myself facing a set of narrow stairs leading to the basement. The giggle echoed from below. Now I was a pizza delivery guy, not a ghost hunter, so my instincts screamed at me to get the heck out of there. But curiosity got the better of me. I descended the creaky stairs, and the air became suffocatingly cold. The basement was dimly lit by a single flickering bulb. In the center of the room, I saw her, a little girl, pale and dressed in an old-fashioned white gown, standing next to a dusty antique dollhouse. The giggle now sounded more like distant weeping. I stammered, asking if she was okay or if she needed help. No response. The room seemed to warp and twist, shadows dancing on the walls like spectral figures. The air grew heavier, and I felt an inexplicable sadness in the pit of my stomach. That's when I noticed that the dollhouse mirrored the mansion, every detail down to the cracked wallpaper and peeling paint. My eyes widened as I realized the little girl was trapped in a timeless loop, reliving the echoes of a past that refused to let go. Without thinking, I bolted up the stairs, leaving the basement and the haunted giggle behind. I burst out of the front door, and the moment my foot hit the sidewalk, the house seemed to exhale its shadows retreating into the night. I stumbled back to my car, my heart pounding, and peeled out of shadow lane like a bat out of hell. I glanced at the rearview mirror, half expecting to see the little girl standing in the darkness, but the street behind me was empty. That night on shadow lane stayed with me, a surreal encounter with the past that left me questioning the thin veil between the living and the echoes that linger in the shadows. Thanks for watching. Don't miss out on more spine chilling tales. Subscribe now for weekly scares. Hit that red button and join our journey into the unknown.